Afternoon everybody. Another beautiful day here on the ranch. I'm going to go ahead and get started uh, working on this new skid steer, or new to me used skid steer. Busted up the uh, bearing carrier the other day using it, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about fixing So this is a Brush Monster 6 foot hydraulic cutter. It goes on the front of this Bobcat S185. I bought this last week with the full knowledge that I had an ear cracked off right here. I knew that, I already talked to the guy, I knew that it was going to have to be repaired. So I went out and uh, kind of putting this thing through its paces and I managed to crack this ear and this ear. So the only thing holding this bearing carrier on is the, uh, the ear that you can't see there. So the steps for this are going to be pretty straightforward in theory. In practice it may be a little bit difficult. I did air the other day whenever I made the uh, intro to this video and I called this a gearbox. It's not technically a gearbox. It is a bearing carrier. Um, there's no gears there. All this is is it's two tapered bearings, one on top, one on bottom, and it holds in a splined shaft. It's got a female spline in the top that the motor sets down in. I think it's a spline shaft that this motor sets down in with the spline shaft and then there is a male spline shaft underneath that the blade carrier mounts to. So my first step is going to be take this motor off. I'm going to take the motor off. It's got two bolts hold it in. I'll take it off. I will set it aside because we may have to get kind of rough with this thing. Um, and I don't want to tear this motor up there six, seven hundred bucks to replace that. So it's a pretty straightforward repair. Once I get the <clears throat> bearing carrier off of the machine. Alright, first step is going to be to get these two bolts out of the motor. I've got my impact and I've got a backing wrench on the bottom. Let's see what we can get down here. There's two, hopefully this will just slide right off. And it does. And we do have a splined shaft on the motor. I'm gonna set this motor aside and then we're gonna raise this thing up and we're gonna see about getting this blade carrier off. Hopefully y'all can see what's going on here. This is the blade carrier. Now how this differs from a bush hog that you'd have on the back of a tractor is this right here is solid, I'm going to call it 5 eighths, 3 six, or three, 3 quarter, 5 eighths, somewhere in there, solid steel. This thing's pretty heavy. It's got an inch and a half um, castle nut. There in the center held on by a cotter pin. I'm going to have to get that cotter pin out of there. You've got two pretty beefy blades that are offset. Um, again, just like on a, on a bush hog, they swing. So that way whenever you come into something that's a little too big, instead of breaking or jamming everything up, it just kind of swings out of the way. So first step going to be to get this cotter pin out, get that castle nut off. And then we're going to have to try to get this plate off. And there's going to be some tricks to that. And uh, so let's get that cutter pin out. All right, so I got you repositioned here. This is the castle nut. There is a cotter pin right here. I don't know. It's going to be kind of a booger to get to because that thing's been on there and beat down and beat to death. But we're going to try to get it out. And then once we get it out, hopefully we can get this castle nut off. I don't know, we're gonna have to see. So watch your ears, I'm gonna do a little banging here. Alright, I think we got her. Alright, now the big question is am I gonna be able to get this castle nut off with an impact 
without spinning this blade carrier around and chopping my arm off. So I'm not sure. Let's see what we got. Easy peasy. So this was the easier part of this project so far getting to this point now the hard part is going to be getting this blade carrier off and I'm gonna slide you in a little bit so I can show you exactly why all right so hopefully you can see this this is the this is where we just took the castle nut off this right here is a tapered splined shaft and one of the things about a tapered shaft is once you crank something down on there it should stay on there. So we're going to have to give this a little bit of love to get it off, hopefully, and it don't fall off on top of me or on top of my camera. So I'm going to slide y'all back in case this thing decides to fall, and then we'll see what's, what's happening next. <clears throat> Alright, for my next attempt, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to Try to go right in through this inspection hole. Go right on the top of that nut. Give it a couple of good whacks. And we'll spin it 180 degrees. give it a few whacks on the other side. So I can see up under there that it is coming off that shaft. Problem is, I'm now hitting the ground. So I'm going to have to lift the whole deck up a little bit and we'll keep on keeping on. So that wasn't near as bad as I thought it was going to be. Here is the, uh, this is the tapered spline. You can see how those splines are, are, the splines aren't necessarily tapered, but the body of that is tapered. And it locks in there, and you can see it was locked in there pretty good. But I've seen guys tie chains and torches and everything else to this. I saw that trick of just tap it, rotate it, tap it. I saw that on one of the bush hog, brush hog, brush cutter um, YouTube channels. Uh, I think maybe it was House, H-O-W-S-E, uh, -E. that's a Mississippi company by the way. Um, they did that, they actually used a, uh, a T-post driver instead of a sledgehammer, but hey, the sledgehammer worked, it came off, I mean it wasn't the easiest thing ever, but once that slides up on this taper, that taper locks it in. And that's where it's at. So now I gotta get these four bolts off, and uh, that'll be pretty much it for today. All right, so this bolt right here is the only one holding this whole shooting match together. And I'm hoping that at least for this one, 
I can reach through this inspection hole and come in. So that worked like a dream. Yep, may need a longer arm. Can y'all hold that for me? get kind of crazy seeing as this is the last one that's holding this whole shooting match together <clears throat> so there we go All right, so that's going to wrap up this video. I'll take this thing into town with me when I go to work tomorrow. Hopefully get it all welded back up and then um, probably do another video of reinstalling everything. Reinstalling is pretty easy. But I did see a lot of videos on YouTube of guys just having fits with these tapered spline shafts. So uh, shout out to the folks at, um, at House that kind of showed that trick. I thought it, surely it can't be that easy, but all you have to do is spin it, tap it, and I think what you're actually doing is you're kind of rocking it down that shaft versus trying to just yank it, because that thing's made a lot. But, um, but yeah, so that was a whole lot easier than I thought it would be. I don't know what the time is, but I, I figure I probably could have done this whole thing um, 30 minutes or less if I wasn't trying to flip the camera and give you all these beautiful action shots that I do. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to close it up. I did beat the rain. We'll get this to the shop. And then um, I'll decide later tonight if I'm going to edit this and put it out as a video or if I'm going to wait and get this repaired and put it back on and make one big long video. My, uh, my videos tend to be way longer than they should be, so I'll probably divide it up into two. But there you go. Have a good one. Good.